right, good morning. Welcome to the Spatial Multiomics Cancer Systems Biology Virtual Workshop. I'm going to share slides here if I can figure out how to do it. Yep. Great. Okay. So um, let me get a disclosure out of the way first. There you go. Um, in particular, I want to point out I'm on the SAB of Atlas Ectomics and also Nanostring. Um, and I want to thank Dominic Lewis and Allison Kudla for a lot of the orchestration and artwork and um, the, basically the machinations of making this work, workshop happen. I want to thank our sponsors, VisGen and Atlas Exomics. Um, remind, we have something like 2,500 registrants for this workshop. And we will be maintaining an archive of the um, lectures and the teaching materials that come with this workshop. Um, and I think all the uh, registrants should get a link to those to those materials. Um, if you have questions, put your questions in the chat. Um, the way that we've structured this workshop is that we have four sessions. And uh, the first session, um, the first two sessions sort of overlap in terms of their concepts. They're both experimental and computational methods. And we have a host of, of expert speakers from around the, the world who are speaking about met methodology. Um, and then the session three is going to be specific applications of spatial multiomics. And then session four is really a tutorial of sort of practical methods in spatial omics. And I think um, Rong Fan's group members, uh, Xu Jin Bao, Ella Besoy, and Jillian Bai, have loaded up uh, links to GitHub software and, and other materials like that that are useful for that practical tutorial. Um, so the motivation behind this workshop, I'm, I'm Jim Heath. I um, direct one of the Cancer Systems Biology U54 programs. And we've been doing spatial omics in my group for a while, but over the past few years, really working closely with Rong Fan to bring spatial epigenomics and transcriptomics and proteomics into particular problems that we're worried about within our U54 cancer systems biology program. And as we started getting lots of data, I began to appreciate that there was a lot of challenges in terms of um, workflows for processing the data, standardizations for establishing what is the ground truth of particular spatial multi-omics image. Um, we've done single cell biology in my group and at the ISB for many years, but spatial omics are a little bit different. Um, one doesn't always get the same type of uniformity of, of signal from pixel to pixel or cell to cell. Um, and on top of that, there is just all kinds of different variations of spatial omics. And it's at the moment, because it's such a young field, it's a little bit challenging to have data sets that are transportable from one lab to another or have ground truth approaches that are transportable from one lab to another, um, much less even within one lab across time points and biospecimens and what have you. Um, and a lot of that is basically expected. So if you look at the, um, let's see if I can forward here, um, the history of this field really goes back to there was an early paper out of Xiaowei Zhang's group um, less than 10 years ago on Murfish. Uh, shortly after that, Long Kai's group at Caltech, Seekfish images showing that you could do basically whole transcriptome and single cells and intact tissues with even sub diffraction limit resolution. Gary Nolan's group came out with a codex approach. I think the first paper on that was in cell um, only six years ago. Um, super multiplex vibrational imaging, Raman for sort of metabolomics or, or using um, you know novel Raman-like probes. Um, Wayne Min's group in 2017. Um, spatial transcriptomics was method of the year in 2020. But basically, the whole field is five to 10 years old. 
And so it's an area in which I think there was a tremendous amount of both scientific demand for this type of information, as well as clinical demand, because one imagines when you can act, once you can actually see a tumor, the immune cells in the tumor interacting with cancer cells and stroma and what have you, that out of that, you would get clinically actionable information that goes well beyond sort of standard H&E or low plex, or low plex um, immuno uh, histochemical staining type assays. Um, and so many, many groups, many, many methods have jumped into this field. And um, here's just a sampling of them. So on the top left, I show, you know, one of the um, early commercial products in this area from Nanostring, where one could pick out particular regions of interest and out of those regions of interest, pull out uh, on the order of 100 proteins or on the order of 1,000 transcripts. Um, and these are targeted methods. There's other targeted probes, such as um, the, the Murfish type approaches are also targeted as well. And then there's next generation sequencing approaches, which are very similar to the more common sort of single cell RNA seq methodologies that one that one can um, can get out of 10x and things things like that. Uh, the resolution of these methods, um, I mentioned that the initial papers from uh, Long Kai and Xiaowei were really showed you could do things at subcellular, but some of these early methods, I, I, I think largely to make them uh, robust from a commercial product point of view, were really focused on looking at regions of interest that might involve maybe 10 cells. Um, and then over the past few years, there's been tools like the, um, uh, the, the nanostring uh, cosmics tool, the Visgen uh, Murfish probes, and I'm showing both of these that allow you to do relatively large tissue areas. I think the kind of things that, you know, one of the companies we work with, Atlas Exomics, um, allows you to do on the order of a half a centimeter by half a centimeter of these types of resolutions. The sort of scales that one associates with immunohistochemical staining um, but allows one to to look at you know thousands of measurements per cell in um, in intact tissues. Um, there's issues of you know what are the tissue types that are used. There's um, fresh frozen. There's even live cells. There's uh, FFPE. Um, and most recently, there's been a second suite of of single cell methods that have been adapted to spatial omics. And these are the spatial at ATAC seq methods that's come out of Rong Pan's group, um, which really allows one to do not just ATAC seq, but other targeted epigenomics, as well as um, single, uh, single pixel RNA seq and, and proteomics as well. Um, here's a, on the right is is live cell imaging that this came out of a collaboration I did with Lu Wei, one of our later speakers, looking at um, the variability of it turns out lipids versus proteins in uh, melan um, uh, melanoma uh, cancer cells as they uh, transition from one cell state to another, and so these these methods have brought us a powerful suite of tools, but in the same time they brought us a number of confounding factors that I think a workshop like this can help begin resolving. And, you know, those confounding factors have to do with what are the best software tools? Um, and we'll have uh, quite a bit of work on that. I've got um, the Giotto object here from Ruben Dries's group. Um, uh, uh, Gene Fan um, has made a number of contributions in this area. Peter Sorger's group with the Minerva package. Um, what's the benchmarkings of these of these algorithms, um, and how do we think about applying those algorithms to tissue samples and different preparations, et cetera? So lots of questions. We're not going to answer all of them in this workshop, but I think we will go uh, a, a significant amount of distance towards towards solving uh, some of these um, uh, 
pathways toward toward solutions. Um, and here's just a few questions that I have put up that maybe we'll be addressing throughout the workshop. Uh, the tissue types I've already mentioned, live cells, FFPE, fresh frozen, the size, the preparation details, how old are the tissues, et cetera. Uh, data quality, uh, something that's common to, to spatial omics, but not so common to other single cell or, or, or micro scale methods are the, are the spatial variations of quality across samples, the number of transcripts per pixel, the number of fragments per pixel for ATAC-seq, uh, alignment with the ground truth. Um, we've got, um, what is the ground truth? Nuclear staining, h &E, immunofluorescence, et cetera. Um, and then of course, data integration. When you're looking at ovarian cancer, it's not the same thing as looking at melanoma or brain cancer. And so there are tissue specific cell atlases that allow you to maybe begin um, having a higher resolution view of, of, of what your data sets mean.